killed a well-known actor in southwest Atlanta. Thomas Jefferson Byrd was found dead on Saturday. In the entertainment industry, actors are usually respected by fans for the efforts they put in movies and series. But amidst the glitz and glamour, there lies a side of their life that would leave you stunned. From unexpected violence to cruel acts, join us in today's video as we take a chilling adventure at 11 actors that were horribly murdered. Prepare to be amazed as these tragic incidents shed light on the harsh realities that can lurk in Hollywood. Congratulating her. And she said to me, I feel like a movie star. I mean, she was so excited. Number 11, Dorothy Stratton. The glamorous story of Dorothy Stratton is one that would make you wonder about the kind of struggles actors go through while they keep entertaining us. Her journey in Hollywood, tragically cut short on August 14, 1980, was marked by a promising start and a harrowing end. Born in February 28, 1960, Stratton's ascent in the entertainment industry was closely tied to her tumultuous relationship with her estranged husband, Paul Snyder. You have the biggest hands. Never wanted to hold hands with any boys. <laughs> Hands were always bigger than his. Originally from Canada, the couple relocated to Los Angeles as Stratton, at the tender age of 18, aimed to make a mark in the modeling world. At that time, Snyder was quite a complicated person, though he was initially responsible for Stratton's breakthrough by securing her a spot in her appearance as a Playboy playmate. While Stratton exuded charm, Snyder often left others with an uneasy feeling. People described him as someone you needed to be cautious around, the kind who made you count your fingers after a handshake. The couple tied the knot in June 1979. A good chance, a very good chance at being centerfold for August. Just before Stratton's career soared to new heights. However, cracks in their relationship had already begun to surface. Despite Stratton's captivating personality, Snyder displayed misogynistic tendencies and allegedly engaged in infidelity. As Stratton's career blossomed, the strain on their marriage intensified, leading to a growing rift. Stratton found herself living with filmmaker Peter Bogdanovich who not only recognized her talent, but also wrote her into a movie he was working on called They All Laughed. The film, released posthumously, captured the essence of Stratton's potential, showcasing the talent that could have flourished had her life not been tragically cut short. Congratulating her, and she said to me, I feel like a movie star. I mean, she was so excited. Amidst the growing distance in their relationship, Stratton and Snyder decided to meet to negotiate a divorce agreement. Little did Stratton know that this meeting would seal her fate. In a shocking turn of events, Snyder, fueled by jealousy and resentment, ended Stratton's life before taking his own in a tragic act of murder-suicide. At the time of her death, Stratton was merely 20 years old, with a future brimming with possibilities cruelly snuffed out. The story of Dorothy Stratton is not just one of Hollywood glamour, but also a stark reminder of the dark shadows that can loom over personal relationships. Stratton's talent and potential were undeniable, but the tragic circumstances surrounding her demise shed light light on the complexities of love, fame, and the often painful realities that accompany them. Who would have thought that she would end up getting murdered by her husband? Number 10. Haing Somnang Ngor the life journey of Haing Somnang Ngor is a captivating tale that traverses the realms of tragedy and inspiration. Born in Cambodia in 1940, Ngor was not destined for a life in the limelight. Instead, his early years were shaped by the tumultuous events of his homeland. Having been an accomplished physician during his early days, he found himself caught in the harrowing grip of the Khmer Rouge regime led by Pol Pot in the late 1970s. Pol Pot's reign marked one of the darkest periods in Cambodian history as he orchestrated the genocide that claimed the lives of an estimated two million people. Ngor, unfortunately, became a first-hand witness to the horrors unleashed by this tyrannical ruler. During the genocide, he endured unimaginable suffering in a forced labor camp. Upon being tortured and traumatized, he did not only witness the loss of countless lives, but also experienced personal tragedy with the death of his wife and unborn child. Meanwhile, the scars of those dark days went ahead to haunt Ngor for the rest of his life. In a twist of fate, Ngor managed to escape the clutches of the Khmer Rouge and sought refuge in the United States. His journey to freedom, however, did not signify the end of his struggles. The memories of the atrocities he had endured lingered, casting a shadow over his newfound life in America. Despite the trauma, Ngor found an unexpected opportunity in Hollywood. He was a cast in the movie titled The Killing Fields, which tells the sad story of the Cambodian genocide. In a role mirroring his own experiences, Ngor played the character of Dith Pran, a Cambodian-American reporter. His portrayal was not merely a performance, it was like reliving the pain he went through. 
a vivid portrayal of the suffering he had endured. Ingor's exceptional acting prowess earned him an Oscar, a testament to his ability to channel personal tragedy into compelling art. Tragically, Ingor's life was cut short on February 25, 1996, in a shocking turn of events. On that fateful day, he was shot dead by three reputed members of the Oriental Lazy Boys street gang as he parked outside his home in Chinatown in downtown Los Angeles, California. Prior to the event, these guys were known to have had prior arrests for snatching purses and jewelry from people. But this incident has left people wondering over time. Was the Cambodian-born actor killed in a botched-up robbery? Or was there a sinister plan behind it? Regardless, the senseless act of violence claimed the life of a man who had already overcome insurmountable odds. Meanwhile, the killers were later sentenced to life in prison. The loss of Hang Somnang Ngor resonated through Hollywood and beyond. His legacy extends beyond the silver screen as he remains a remarkable symbol of survival and courage for hope in the face of tragedy. Such a tragic end to his life, don't you think? Number 9. Stephanie Mosley Stephanie Mosley's death by murder on December 8, 2014, came as a shock to her friends and fans. The unfortunate incident regarding her death unfolded when police responded to a call from a concerned neighbor who reported hearing about a dozen shots fired in the early morning at Mosley's apartment. By the time the SWAT team arrived, both Mosley and her husband, rapper Earl Hayes, were found dead. It appeared that Hayes had taken Mosley's life before ending his own in a devastating murder-suicide. While the motive behind Hayes' actions remained unclear, the couple had recently separated, possibly due to issues related to infidelity. Despite their split, there were reports suggesting that Mosley and Hayes were attempting to reconcile and mend their relationship. At the time of her death, Mosley was actively involved in the VH1 show, Hit the Floor. Although she might not be a household name, her contributions to the entertainment world extended beyond acting. Mosley was renowned for her dance and choreography work, collaborating with renowned artists like Beyonce and Britney Spears. Her versatile talent also led her to a role as a cheerleader on Ashley Tisdale's show, Hellcats. Mosley's journey in the entertainment industry began in 2003, showcasing her dedication and passion for her craft. At the young age of 30, she had accumulated more than a dozen acting credits. The circumstances surrounding Mosley's death shed light on the complexities of personal relationships, even within the glamorous world of Hollywood. The details of Mosley's life and the events leading to her demise brought contemplation about the often hidden struggles faced by those in the spotlight. Hearing stories like this would make you wonder what these actors go through as they keep entertaining us. Number 8. Carl Switzer who would have thought a popular child actor like Carl Switzer would be in the list of actors that were murdered? Born on August 7, 1927, his life was tragically cut short on January 21, 1959. This tragic event vividly portrayed a Hollywood child star whose life took a dark turn. Switzer met his untimely end not on a glamorous film set, but in the midst of a dispute with a friend, Moses Butch Stilts. Switzer and Stilts were not just friends, they were business partners in a bear-hunting guide venture. However, their once thriving partnership soured due to financial disagreements. The rift reached a boiling point when Switzer believed Stilts owed him money, reportedly around $50. This financial dispute escalated into a fatal confrontation. The atmosphere was charged, emotions were high, and the two guys found themselves entangled in a physical struggle over a pistol. In the heat of the moment, the gun discharged, leading to Switzer. Death. The exact circumstances surrounding the $50 debt remained disputed, with Stilts allegedly denying any obligation to repay his debt. Adding a layer of complexity to the tragedy, both Switzer and Stilts were under the influence of alcohol at the time of the fatal altercation. The impaired judgment fueled the intensity of their disagreement, resulting in dire consequences. In the aftermath of the shooting, Stilts found himself facing the full force of the law. The police arrested him, and he was charged with murder for Switzer. Switzer's death. However, the legal proceedings took an unexpected turn during the trial. Stiltz's defense argued that the shooting was an act of self-defense, a claim that would ultimately sway the jury. In a surprising verdict, Stiltz was acquitted of the charges. The jury deemed the shooting a justifiable homicide under California law, acknowledging the circumstances of self-defense. The courtroom drama added a layer of controversy to an already tragic narrative, leaving many to grapple with the complexities of justice and the blurry lines surrounding self-defense. 
Before the unfortunate end to his life, Carl Switzer had carved a niche for himself in Hollywood. As a child actor, he gained fame for his portrayal of the lovable character Alfalfa in the comedy short series Our Gang during the 1930s and 40s. Despite the challenges many child actors face in transitioning to adult roles, Switzer continued his career in Hollywood, accumulating over 100 acting credits by the time of his demise. His death initially attracted little attention from the press, but the controversy Controversial circumstances of his death have become the subject of true crime articles and documentaries. Switzer is still remembered as one of the better child actors of his era, and as a reliable actor in supporting roles. Then fighting word, partner. We're cowboys from the mouth. Number 7. Marie Trintignant. You can't talk about Marie Trintignant without mentioning the perpetrator behind her death, Bertrand Cantat. This French actress went through a lot before untimely demise. It all started in 2003 as Trintignant began an affair with Bertrand Cantat, the lead singer of French rock band Noir Désir. That same year, Cantat, Trintignant, and Trintignant's mother traveled to Lithuania so Trintignant and her mother could finish work on a television movie about Colette. On July 26, while in their shared hotel room, Cantat flew into a jealous rage during an argument over a text message sent to Trintignant by her husband, from whom she was separated. Cantat proceeded to beat Trintignant severely around her head and face. She died days later from cerebral edema brought about by her injuries. A year later, in 2004, Cantat faced the consequences of his actions when he was convicted of killing Trintignant. The judicial system sentenced him to eight years in prison for this grave offense. However, the story took a surprising turn when Cantat was released on parole in October 2007, having served less than half of his original sentence. The early release sparked public outcry and fueled the controversy surrounding the case. Case. Critics questioned the legal system's handling of a crime that resulted in a life lost, with many expressing dissatisfaction at what they saw as a lenient outcome. Marie Trintignant, the victim in this tragic tale, was 41 years old at the time of her death. She had been a highly esteemed actor, earning multiple awards for her outstanding performances. The shock and sorrow that surrounded her demise were not only due to the loss of a talented actor, but also the circumstances that led to her tragic end. The release of Cantat's album a decade later reignited the public's frustration and dismay. Many felt that an artist convicted of such a grave crime should not be welcomed back into the limelight so soon. This is indeed an intriguing story filled with complications, don't you think? Number 6. Judith Barcy the story of Judith Barcy is one that revealed the hidden horrors of an abusive relationship within her family. She was a child actor who would have made it big in the Hollywood industry had she not died at a young age. At the tender age of 10, Barcy had already amassed an impressive 25 acting credits, showcasing her talent in various roles, including her part as Thea in Jaws The Revenge. She wasn't just a child actor, she was a rising star with a promising future. Behind the glitz and glamour, however, lurked a harrowing reality. Judith Barcy was trapped in an abusive relationship with her father, Yosef Barcy. Despite her thriving career, her personal life was marred by a distressing ordeal. The abuse had been ongoing for years, shrouded in secrecy while she continued to light up the screen. Yosef Barcy, originally from the Soviet Union, had moved to Los Angeles with Maria Benko, Judith's mother, in the 1950s. However, the promise of a new life in America crumbled beneath the weight of Yosef's drinking and the strain it put on their relationship. The couple eventually separated in 1986, after Maria filed police reports detailing the abuse and verbal threats she endured. Unfortunately, legal action did not follow, leaving Judith and her mother in a vulnerable position. The grim reality of Yosef's threats came to a devastating fruition. He had repeatedly threatened to kill Judith and Maria, with friends estimating at least 500 instances of such threats. That's quite a figure, though. The chilling predictability of these threats raises questions about the system's ability to intervene and protect those in danger. Tragically, on one fateful day at their home in San Fernando, California, Yosef Barsi carried out his horrific threats. 
He shot both Judith and Maria before committing suicide. One can't help but wonder how a child so talented and successful on screen could suffer in silence off screen. The dynamics of abuse within families can be complex and multifaceted, making it challenging for victims to break free from the cycle of violence. Were there missed opportunities for intervention? Did the signs of distress go unnoticed in the turmoil of Judith's Hollywood career? These are questions that have been left unanswered since the tragic incident. Number 5. Lana Clarkson This beautiful, long-legged blonde actress was known to be a kind, intelligent, and dependable actor with a comedic talent as well. Her untimely demise as a 40-year-old actor unfolds as a chilling episode in Hollywood history, impaired by the infamous record producer Phil Spector. While Clarkson may not be a household name, she had etched her name in the industry with notable roles in a few films, with her last credit dating back to 2001, a few years before she was murdered. The fateful encounter between Clarkson and Spector occurred on the night of February 2, 2003. Clarkson voluntarily accompanied Spector to his California mansion, setting the stage for a horrifying turn of events. According to prosecutors in Spector's murder trial, Clarkson resisted Spector's advances in the early hours of February 3 in that same year. And the king's daughter will make life very short for Ancaris. An act that apparently incited Spector to a point of no return. In a shocking escalation, Spector shot Clarkson to death. However, Spector tried to shift blame by saying Clarkson's death was a suicide. He also strongly denied having any role in her shooting. Despite his denial, immediate actions following the crime told a different story. Shortly after killing Clarkson, Spector reportedly left his house and confessed the murder to his driver, who later relayed the chilling admission to the police. The driver recounted the terrifying moment, stating that as soon as he opened the door, he saw Spector standing in the door with a gun in hand. Police instantly arrested Spector the night after the murder. However, the legal proceedings took unexpected turns. Despite the severity of the charges, Spector managed to secure release on a staggering $1 million bail while awaiting trial. I see you've improved the company you keep. If you're so fond of them. This sparked controversy and fueled public scrutiny over the perceived leniency granted to a man facing such grave accusations. The legal battle unfolded over a protracted period. Twenty months after the murder, prosecutors charged Spectre with murder. The initial trial, however, ended in a hung jury as they struggled to secure a conviction. Upon retrial, the 69-year-old Spectre faced the consequences of his actions. He was convicted of murder and sentenced to 19 years to life in prison, closing a chapter on a case that had caught the public's attention. Number 4. Thomas Jefferson Byrd it's surprising that a respected actor like Thomas Jefferson Byrd would be on the list of murdered actors. He met a tragic end to his life at the age of 70 on October 3, 2020. Despite getting a late start in the acting industry, not making his debut until his early 40s, Byrd carved out a distinguished career with over 30 acting credits to his name. His contributions included notable roles in several Spike Lee movies, and he was recently part of the director's TV series, She's Gotta Have It. The late start didn't hinder his success, as he even earned a Tony Award nomination in 2003. Born in 1950, Thomas Jefferson Byrd's journey into acting was unconventional, but undeniably impactful. His work with Spike Lee, a renowned filmmaker, further solidified his reputation in the industry. One can't help but wonder how Byrd's career would have unfolded if he had entered the acting scene earlier. The circumstances surrounding Byrd's tragic death added a layer of mystery to his narrative. Witnesses suggested that the fatal shooting might have stemmed from an argument at a local store. A tragic loss is how friends of actor Thomas Jefferson Byrd are describing his death. Yet police couldn't confirm this speculation. The uncertainty leaves room for questions about the events leading up to that fateful day. What transpired during the alleged argument, and how did it escalate to such a tragic outcome? A breakthrough in the case occurred a few weeks later when 30-year-old Antonio Demetris Rines was apprehended in connection with Byrd's murder. The arrest brought relief and closure to those mourning Byrd's untimely death. However, it also raises questions questions about the motives behind the crime and the potential connection between Rhines and Byrd. Antonio Rhines faced serious charges, including felony murder, and was subsequently sentenced to 20 years in prison. The resolution of the legal proceedings provides some answers, but it also leaves lingering questions about the context of the crime. What details emerged during the investigation that pointed to Rhines as the perpetrator? And was there a deeper motive behind Byrd's tragic death? Number 3. David Huffman on the fateful day of February 27, 1985,
the world lost a prominent TV actor named David Huffman in a shocking incident that unfolded as he bravely attempted to stop a car burglary. Huffman, who had embarked on his acting journey in 1973, made a name for himself primarily in television series with a few notable appearances in movies. The tragic events of that day began when a 16-year-old named Genaro Samano Villanueva, in the act of breaking into vans, caught Huffman's attention. The veteran actor, having heard the commotion, Mr. Jackson hired us to clean up the camp, look after things when he's gone, decided to intervene and put a halt to the unfolding crime. It was a courageous move that would unfortunately lead to a devastating outcome. Genaro Samano Villanueva, the teenage perpetrator, was breaking into vehicles near where Huffman had parked. Upon learning of that, Huffman took it upon himself to address the situation. Huffman, now in his car, pursued Genaro Samano Villanueva in an attempt to stop and detain him. The unfolding confrontation between the seasoned actor and the teenage culprit took an unexpectedly tragic turn. As Huffman reached Genaro Samano Villanueva and confronted him, a physical struggle ensued. Despite their significant age difference, with Huffman being 39 years old and Genaro Samano Villanueva merely 16, the altercation proved fatal for the TV actor. In a shocking turn of events, Genaro Samano Villanueva fatally stabbed Huffman twice during the struggle. The incident left many questioning the motives and circumstances that led to such a tragic end for David Huffman. Genaro Samano Villanueva was no stranger to encounters with the law. The incident involving Huffman was not his first brush with criminal activities. In the aftermath of the tragedy, Genaro Samano Villanueva faced the consequences of his actions. In 2011, the San Diego District Attorney reported that Genaro Samano Villanueva had been sentenced to 26 years to life for the murder of David Huffman. An additional layer of complexity is evident in the fact that, as of the District Attorney's report in 2011, Genaro Samano Villanueva had been denied parole. The decision indicated a recognition of the gravity of Huffman's murder and a determination to uphold justice. Number 2. Merlin Santana the vibrant and promising career of Merlin Santana came to a tragic end on November 9, 2002, in South Central Los Angeles. At the age of 25, Santana, widely recognized for his starring role as Romeo Santana on The Steve Harvey Show, had become a rising star in the entertainment industry. He had also ventured into major shows and was on the verge of making the leap from television to the silver screen, showcasing the vast potential that lay ahead. His charisma and talent had opened dunes for him to explore roles in other major shows, marking his versatility as an actor. The tragic turn of events that claimed Santana's life unfolded. <laughs> but you were the one talking about how people in the 60s stood up for their beliefs. As he sat in a car with a friend on that fateful night, the circumstances of his death revolved around a shocking series of events linked to a 15-year-old teenage girl named Monique King. Santana and King found themselves at the center of a nightmarish tale that would forever after the trajectory of Santana's promising career. According to reports, Santana and King were together at a house that night. The situation took a dark turn when King falsely claimed that Santana and one of his friends had made unwanted advances towards her. This baseless accusation would prove to be the catalyst for a chain of events that would end in tragedy. Fueled by vengeance, King left the house and enlisted the help of two older friends to confront Santana. The confrontation escalated tragically when Dom and Andre Gators, one of King's accomplices, returned and shot Santana while he was in the car. The shocking act of violence brought a promising career to an abrupt and heartbreaking end. This raised questions about the impact of false accusations and the devastating consequences of seeking revenge. In the legal aftermath, justice was served with varying degrees of severity. Damon Andre Gates, the individual responsible for Santana's murder, received a harsh sentence of 70 years to life in prison. Meanwhile, Monique King, the instigator of the false accusations, was remanded into custody for eight years. Another person involved got a 23-year sentence. Basically, Merlin Santana's early death is a story about unexpected loss and the terrible effects of violence. Number 1. Christina Grimmie the shocking news of the murder of singer and actor Christina Grimmie on June 10, 2016, sent ripples of disbelief through the world. At just 22 years old, Grimmie had already captured the hearts of many with her mesmerizing voice. She gained fame through her popular YouTube channel and made a significant impact on the reality TV competition show, The Voice. To add to her accomplishments... You know, a record producer came to the lounge last night. Really? 
Did you talk to him? She had recently ventured into acting, starring in her first feature film, The Matchbreaker, released just a few months before her untimely death. The tragic incident unfolded during an autograph signing event at the Plaza Live in Orlando. Christina Grimmy, in the midst of connecting with her fans, had just concluded a musical performance. The atmosphere was one of joy and celebration, but it abruptly turned into a scene of horror when a 27-year-old man named Kevin James Loibel approached and fatally shot her. The aftermath of the event saw Loibel's life ending by suicide. The senseless act left many in shock, grappling with the profound question of why someone would choose to harm such a talented and promising young artist. The motive behind the crime remained elusive, and the search for answers intensified as investigators delved into the details surrounding the tragedy. As Grimmy's family and fans mourned the loss of a young talent on the brink of stardom, questions lingered about the nature of her connection with the assailant and what could drive someone to commit such a heinous act. Christina Grimmy's untimely death marked the premature end of a career filled with potential. Her musical prowess and engaging personality had endeared her to a wide audience, leaving a void in the music and entertainment industry. One can't help but wonder what heights Grimmy could have reached, what musical masterpieces she might have created, and how her career might have continued to blossom. In the wake of the tragedy, Christina Grimmy's brother, Marcus Grimmy, sought to channel the pain into a positive force. He founded the Christina Grimmy Foundation in her honor, dedicating it to assisting victims of gun violence. The foundation serves as a beacon of hope and support, turning a devastating loss into an opportunity to make a difference in the lives of others affected by similar tragedies. Thank you for watching and see you in the next video.